they looked at how the statements that you run in your JSON prompt kind of translate to uh, elements in a Java class. And there is a high level Java class uh, that's kind of managing the member variables, which correspond to the variables that you create in the shell. But there is one other element of uh, any typical Java class that you'll normally find, which is about the class declaration, and those are the imports. How do imports work in this kind of an environment? The concept of imports also works the same way. You can import in your J shell, and then that kind of translates to imports in the top level class that J shell is maintaining. All right. So if I were to import something, I can say import, and then Java dot, and then I can press tab to autocomplete. Uh, let's say I pick, um, I don't know, I'll just pick time. Time dot, I press tab again, and then uh, I can type clock. Hit enter, and now I have access to the clock class in my J shell. So I can say clock, and then I get the, the class over here, and then C equals new clock. I don't know if I can instantiate this like this. Well, yeah, it's an abstract class. It cannot be instantiated, but you get the idea. You can import a class like this, and then you can use it in your J shell command. There are probably better examples I can pick, but I'm not going to believe that right now. But remember that this can be imported. The other thing that I want to highlight is in the previous tutorial, I used this class called IO exception. I was able to throw IO exception from my JShell prompt, but I did not import it. I had to import it from, I believe, java.io. So let's try that out. Import java.io. Let's see, yeah, here is the IO exception. Uh, let's say I import it, or let's say I do not import it, okay? And then I can say a new IO exception, and I can create an instance of the new IO exception. How could I use it without importing it? Well, it turns out when you start a new J shell session, there are certain things that the J shell session automatically imports. They are common classes that you would typically use. So J shell automatically does the import for you. The way to access what are the things that J shell automatically imports, you run the command slash imports. And then here you see these are the imports that are currently active. Those are the things that you have currently imported. Just like you have slash wars for current variables, slash methods for the current methods. Similarly, you can do a slash imports for all the current imports. And here you see this is the import that I just did. But notice all these other imports. We didn't actually import this, but it's automatically imported by JShell. So all the classes in java.io, all the classes in java.math, all these stuff are automatically available to you when you start your JShell session. Again, this is a little bit different from your typical Java class that you write and compile, but again, JShell is an environment where you know the intention is for you to just dive in and start experimenting. And, and the platform developers felt that having these automatically imported is handy, so they have done that, and this is available to you. But then if you wanna import something new, you just go ahead and type the import statement and it becomes available to you. The class becomes added to the namespace that you're operating on in JShell and you can create and access those classes.